Hey guys, Mr. Herbst here coming at you unlive, and today's focus is going to be on cell division. Uh, so what's the purpose of cell division? Well, there are actually several reasons. Uh, the most important reason is to make sure that the whole organism that the cells are in actually will grow larger. Um, also, we want to divide cells so that we can replace those old and broken cells. Uh, we also want to make sure that we can heal from injury. So we're going to replace those uh, destroyed cells from the injury with new cells. Cell division, in, uh, at least in eukaryotes, occurs in two major stages. We can have mitosis. That's actually where we're going to divide the nucleus. And inside the nucleus is the DNA. So that's where we're going to divide the DNA. And then cytokinesis. That is where we're going to divide the cytoplasm. So biologists divide um, mitosis into four major phases. We have prophase. We have metaphase. We have anaphase. And we have telophase. Uh, if you take a look here, it, those literally do spell out PMAT. So if you can associate PMAT or peeing on the mat with mitosis, you're going to do great. So cell division, here I have a diagram of what's going on in cell division. I am going to get out my different colored pen here. Uh, it's all, it all starts here with prophase. That's this phase right here. That is, I'm going to abbreviate P. And this next phase here, that's metaphase. That's M. And I'm going to abbreviate this one here. That's anaphase with an A. And then this guy here is telophase. That's T. And then this here is the division of the cytoplasm. That's cytokinesis. I'll abbreviate that with a C. And then what's this phase right here? Well, if you think about it, what happens when the cells aren't dividing? What, what do they spend most of their life in? I talked about that in my last video. That was interphase. I'll abbreviate that with an I. All right, so our first step here is to talk about prophase. What's happening in prophase? Well, we have um, a, a few things happening. First off, we're going to form some spindle fibers, and we are also going to form these little things in here called chromosomes. Um, those are A chromosome is a pair of sistered chromatids, those little things right there that you see all contain DNA. Uh, DNA normally doesn't look like that. It's usually a squiggly clump of stuff that you usually can't see. So in this, uh, in the first phase here, prophase, we are going to get uh, DNA clumping up into those things called chromosomes. So DNA is the first phase. Or I mean, sorry, prophase is the first phase. Uh, it's where we're going to get these uh, centrioles that uh, are going to separate to on opposite sides of the cell. So these things right here. They look like little uh, pieces of Twizzlers. Those are centrioles. Those are going to move to each side of the cell in preparation for dis dividing those uh, chromosomes. And then from sh shooting out from those centro centrioles, we are going to get these things called spindle fibers, which are going to be used later on to help to divide those uh, chromosomes. Again, chromatin uh, condenses into things, these things called chromosomes. So um, all of these little X-shaped things right here, these are all chromosomes. Chromatin and chromosomes both contain DNA. However, DNA doesn't usually exist as this X-shaped thing. It usually exists as a big mess of stuff. Uh, again, uh, another important thing that happens in prophase is we're going, this, this nuclear membrane right here is going to begin to break down and go away. And the nucleolus, out of there. So I want to talk about for a second what these things called chromosomes are. I previously mentioned that they are bundled up DNA. Uh, it is genetic information, otherwise known as DNA, uh, is passed from one organism to the other uh, through generations on these things called chromosomes. Before cell division, that's, that occurs, if you remember from my last video, in I, that interface. Each chromosome is copied during interface. So we're going to get the... Uh, the DNA being replicated during interphase. When cells are not dividing, they are, they are in this form called chromatin, which again is that mess of DNA. So each chromosome, here I have a picture of a chromosome right here. This whole thing is a chromosome. That whole X-shaped thing is a chromosome. It, comp it has these two parts to it that are known as sister chromatids. So right here, uh, this all is DNA. However, this is two copies of all of your DNA. Why do we have two copies? Because this thing right here is actually going to split apart and go to each one of those two daughter cells 
that we're going to create in mitosis. Uh, so each pair of chromatids is attached in an area uh, called a centromere. That's this middle part right here. This middle part right here, centromere. Think of that sort of like an anchor. It's holding it all together, the centromere, holding it all together. When a cell divides, again, uh, sister chromatids, these things right here are going to go into opposite sides of that dividing cell. Again, each new cell gets one sister chromatid. So anyway, that was prophase. What happens in metaphase? Uh, this phase right here is metaphase. The biggest thing that you can see is it looks like these things right here are lining up. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, the centriole is beginning to make these chromosomes right here in the middle line up. And they are going to be pulled to opposite sides of that cell. So again, metaphase is the second phase of mitosis. Uh, the chromosomes line up in the center. That's what uh, makes scientists look at a cell and go, hey, boom, that's in metaphase. The chromosomes are all lined up in the middle of the cell. And the spindle fibers connect to the centromere. So if you, if, you, if you look here, the spindle fiber, this fiber-looking thing, connects right there to that little dot, that little middle piece of the chromosome. And it's going to help to pull it apart and move each chromatid to each side of the cell. Anaphase this is the third phase of mitosis. Uh, what happens in anaphase? Well, you can already look right here. It looks like the chromosomes are beginning to pull apart. So we are getting those chromosomes to begin to separate. And anaphase is the third phase of mitosis. The sister chromatids separate into individual chromosomes. So this thing right here is going to go to this end, and this guy right here is going to go to this end. And so the chromosomes are separating the opposite sides of the cell. Uh, the, the spindle fibers do that because uh, they begin to shorten, and they again, they are attached right here at this little dot called the centromere, and they are going to move it towards the pole or the opposite side of each corresponding cell. Telophase, that is the fourth phase of, my of mitosis. It's the fourth and final phase of mitosis. And this is basically where we finish up cell division, where we finish up mitosis. Uh, chromatids are pulled to the opposite poles of each cell. So uh, you can see here that we, we, it looks like we have two cells beginning to form. Uh, each one has its own chromatid. Each, each one has its own sister chromatid called the chromosome. Uh, the nucleolus begins to form again. And the nuclear membrane begins to form around those existing chromosomes. The last thing that's going to happen in cell division is we are going to have to split the cytoplasm. Uh, that is not the same thing as mitosis because mitosis is only, again, only talking about splitting the DNA, which is in the nucleus. So uh, the splitting of, of the cytoplasm is called cytokinesis, and that's not part of mitosis. Uh, the cytoplasm in animals will just simply pinch off. It's a little bit more complicated in plants, though. Um, in plants, we have this thing called a cell plate that forms between the two nucleuses, or the nuclei that we're, uh, that we just, the new form nuclei that we got from mitosis. So right here, this thing right here in the middle, that is a cell plate, uh, begins to form between the two nucleus, nu nuclei. This is a nucleus. And uh, the cell plate is going to continue to, gra to gradually develop and basically force those two plant cells apart and as they are forced apart a new cell wall will begin to form where the cell plate was and divide those two uh, plant cells in half. So let's go ahead and review. What happens in my mitosis? This is going to be the major focus of this unit, one of the most important concepts to know in all of biology. Um, the reason that we do mitosis is to guarantee that we can um, guarantee genetic continuity. That means that to make sure that every cell uh, that every cell that we get from a parent cell, so every cell that we force to divide is going to have that same DNA inside of every single cell. This results in two new cells um, that are that are identical to the parent cells. So it would be as if I was to make a copy of myself, literally make a clone of myself, so I'd have two Mr. Herbs walking around. Each one is going to be identical to each other. Uh, they're going to be identical twins. Um, so each daughter cell can do the same function as the parent cell. 
And um, one of the most important reasons that we do mitosis is those so that organisms can actually grow up and become adults. Again, that, that focus was on uh, cell division. My name is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. Y'all have a nice day.